Hello guys and welcome to the mob farm that I'm calling the Crusher. This bad boy puts out 14,000 mobs per second, it's only 7 wide, and you can expand even more on it so you can get up to 20,000 and even above 20,000 drops an hour. Now this guy is crazy, it's using a design that no one really uses for the survival world, but you'll see a lot in the Enderman world, and that is the Piston Pusher. So let's go ahead and turn this guy off as we start up the tutorial here. I am Gaming Central, and I'm hoping to get you guys a good new mob farm today that you might want to use in your world. Now this farm uses something very similar to the Enderman farms, but when I tried Tripwire and Pressure Plates to knock the mobs off, they actually had a lot of glitches spawning on them, and they wouldn't necessarily be knocked off right away. So I ended up using a redstone clock system, just like this. We'll have one path like this, 15 wide in this version and 9 in the version we'll build later. 15 wide, that is. So we have a floor here, a floor here. And when they spawn, they'll be here. The pistons will be pushed about every 5 seconds. And when mobs spawn, they'll be pushed here. If they don't fall on their own accord, the pistons will push them in. And it's very, very fast because of that. Now you can slow down or speed up the speed if you want to. This uh, may vary a little bit depending on how laggy your world is. I have not done any of that testing yet, so hopefully you guys, the viewers, will be able to help me test that and see how it varies in lagging worlds. Now, here are some of the stats. At three layers, we have 780 and about the same of all the normal drops, like gunpowder. That's quite a bit. That's over 10 stacks of gunpowder just after three layers. That's three of those over there that I just built. And that's going to be 3,248 drops total at 3 layers. Now at 10 layers, it's getting up to around the 2,100s. That's a lot more. That's over 3 stacks of, or not 3 stacks, 30 stacks of gunpowder, making 8,509 drops total at 10 layers. That's about an inventory for each of these drops. And then at 31 layers, which is the full version, there is going to be 3,677 gunpowder, and a little bit less for the others. I'm not sure why I got so much more gunpowder, but around 3,400 for these. And not to mention that these also have witch drops. 100 here, about 200 here, and about 300 here, the full version. Now, witch drops aren't always great. There's some spider eyes, there's some glass bottles, and there's some stupid sticks that nobody likes. But there's also some redstone and glowstone, so it's really just a bonus. But this is giving you 11.5 stacks of TNT an hour, which is crazy. This is a great farm that I'm really happy with. I'm going to be making it my own single player world very soon. But let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. But before I do, I do want to actually show one thing quick. There are bats that will spawn in this, just like any mob farm. And so if you are worried about having a decreased spawn rate due to bats, I went ahead and created a mob reset here in my world. It's very simple. Uh, you can also just run away like a normal person, 128 blocks, and come back. But I created a minecart to do so itself, so if you hop in the minecart, hit the button, you'll go over 128 blocks over here, and anything in this area will be despawned, which means when you come back, they'll have to spawn again. So you won't have all those stupid bats sitting in your system and not doing anything. But let's go ahead and work on the tutorial now. Alright guys, so in terms of the cost of this building, that's going to be 28 hoppers for the clock, and then in the example version over here, which is the full version, you're going to need 30 pistons per layer, 30 redstone per layer, and 2 redstone torches per layer. But then in this version, which we're building for the tutorial, which is only 9 wide, and that's purely so that we can speed it up a little bit, it's going to be 18 pistons, 18 redstone, and 2 torches. Now the clock isn't a per layer thing, don't worry about that. It's going to be once you're going to be putting these 28 hoppers down in total to run the clock that basically pushes all the mobs into the center. Now let's go ahead and start building. I put down a glass falling area just so we can see all the mobs later. And let's go ahead and get up here. So this is nine wide on each side. This is the floor right here. This is where they'll be spawning. And then around here, I built a perimeter, just a little circle around it. And that is going to keep them all in here nice and tight and cozy in their little kill chamber. So that's really nice for them. And we're going to have these pistons right here on the sides to make sure that they get pushed in. They don't have to fall off, of course. And then we're going to bring this up as well with it. Now we also need the redstone wiring blocks. So the redstone is going to go on top of these stone bricks. I'm actually going to mark them off with stone, uh, stone bricks, I should say, instead of the stone, so they stand out a little bit. We'll have redstone on that later. Now we also want to put some more blocks on top of the pistons because we can't have any light being in contact with these pistons because pistons, unlike other things, they light light through. And even though they look completely solid, the light will go through these pistons, so you do have to cover these guys up entirely. You can't try and save a few resources or anything like that. 
So let's go ahead and get some stone here as well, and we're going to continue this farm up a little bit. I'm going to do around four layers so I can establish to you guys how the redstone works. This is a little bit funky in terms of how you uh, move the redstone towers up, the redstone torch towers. And yeah, but let's go ahead and make one more layer here before I go ahead and skip to another area and get this guy built up once again. You're going to have the pistons along here, not facing up though. That is a stupid way to do it and get them all built along here and on this side and then of course raise the walls as well and then we're gonna have blocks behind these pistons and above these pistons and then it will just build into another floor like this so I'm gonna leave that for now but the way this works is you have two layers here and then basically a block that can't be used and then another layer so this is very very compact I should stay and hopefully you will not fall into your chamber and die like I would if I was in survival mode but that said, I'm going to go ahead and skip, build these layers up, and then we can talk about the redstone. Alright, so next is going to be the redstone clock. And to build this, we're going to be having 14 hoppers on either side, all going into one another in a circle. And that is going to have an item filtering through it that will power it every 5 seconds or so. So let's go ahead and put down a repeater here. So we'll extend the redstone signal from the comparator. And then we're going to put a line of repeaters, or not repeaters, hoppers, right here. And those will come all the way across to over here. But on this end one, we need to make sure, of course, that it's not going into a stone brick because that won't do anything. Then we're going to have another hopper there. That as well should not go into a stone brick because, once again, it won't do anything. And we're just going to put all these hoppers going into one another. So there's a line here that goes all the way down to here, and then it switches over to this side, and it goes all the way over here, switches to this side, and it continues in an endless circle. So now we can go ahead and hit these bricks out. Now, if you're worried about the redstone clock stopping, when you log off or leave the area or anything like that don't worry about it these are hoppers they will automatically do this there's no redstone signal needed so the item will simply filter through on its own accord so that's very convenient in terms of redstone clock now I went ahead and built up the redstone wire here because I don't feel like placing redstone wire is something I need to give a tutorial about but anyways the clock is already working basically right now all we need is one item so let's go ahead and grab I guess we can just put this chest from our inventory in bam and then now it will work so if we wait a little bit, it'll come around to the comparator, bam, and that hits the redstone. However, it's not extending here yet because we haven't built the torch towers. We'll do that in a second. I'm going to go ahead and hit this repeater out. I don't want the pistons going while we work, but that is how you build the clock. And I'm going to build this on the other side now, and then we can work on the torch towers. All right, now that both the clocks have been built, we can work on the torch towers. Now each side, just like they have their own clock, they'll need their own torch tower. But it's very simple and it will be built the same. So let's go ahead and start this guy up. So we're going to have one block right at the signal of the redstone length right here and then a torch on top. And then we're going to have a block on top of that with a torch on top. So what's happening is this is already getting power. And then it's powering this block which will basically activate this to power this one. And then we're going to have a weird little torch tower here that is going to go torch on the side. You can put it to either this side or this side. But I like it on this side personally, so that's how we're doing it. That is final. And then we're going to have a block above this and then a torch on the back of it. And then once again, we're going to start from the bottom. And now we are here. We're going to have our block like that, like we did on the bottom. And then once again, it extends up like that. And if you're doing another layer, once again, it would go from there on to a block on top of it, to a torch on that block, to another block on top of that torch, and then another torch. It looks a little crazy, but that is how I extend the signal. You can do it your own way if you want to, but just make sure that if you're doing a 15-block version, that redstone does have to extend like it does with torches, because it will have a 15-block maximum reach, of course, with the redstone. And unless you want to do some funky stuff, I, th I feel like this is the best way to do it. So that is basically all. I'm going to go ahead and build up the torch tower on the other side now and then we can work on the final little bits of this. Alright, now at this point you should be very proud of yourself. You should basically be done once you've finished all this redstone here that I've built in. Now of course you want to make sure these repeaters are down. That is a very easy way to make sure your farm is not working is if you don't have the redstone finished. And another way to make sure your farm is working is to actually put in some mob spawning traps. So what I mean by that, no I should not say traps, but basically stop mob spawning on these little areas out here you don't want them spawning on the redstone now because there's a redstone uh, comparator and repeater here they should not spawn on that but go ahead and slab up the areas with just plain redstone they can spawn on these blocks assuming there is no light so at night time that is something you have to be worried about potentially now also make sure that your pistons are completely covered as I said earlier in the video if you're trying to save space with the pistons uh, by not putting in as many blocks as you potentially could 
that's not going to work. You are going to have light come through the pistons, so unless you're always using nighttime, which I do not recommend, uh, I would go ahead and put blocks all the way around those pistons, make sure there's no light coming in. Of course, you do not have to put it on these sides of the piston because it's already a dark area. But yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and finish the slabs here, and then you also want to slab up the roof. And since this is not any bigger, we're just going to slab this part of the roof and say that this is done. Just going to put our stamp on it, and there we go. So if I just fill this all the way in, it will be dark inside now, and we can get some mob spawning. If I turn it off peaceful, that is. It's not. It's still on peaceful, so there wouldn't be any mob spawns anyways. But that is really all there is for the tutorial, guys. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any feedback, um, I would like to hear it. And other than that, I really hope to see some likes and subscribes. I'd really appreciate it. This is my first video on my channel, so I'd really, really like to see that happen. As well, I would also recommend putting some hoppers on the bottom of this guy. Just put some slabs over it or whatever you feel like is necessary, and then put some hoppers going into chests. That's what I do. There are a lot of drops, so you want to make sure you can actually collect them all. So I just have a chest connected to each hopper. But thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful day, and that is all.